And yes, to be more specific, development since the 18th National Congress of the Communist Party of China. Ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. Welcome to the press conference of the Publicity Department of the CPC Central Committee. Today we're having the 10th press conference of the press conference series of China in the past decade. Today, we are very happy with us, Mr. Chen Yulu, Deputy Governor of the People's Bank of China, Mr. Xiao Yunqin, Vice Chairman of China Banking and Insurance Regulatory Commission, Mr. Li Chang, Vice Chairman of China Securities Regulatory Commission, and Ms. Wang Chunyin, Deputy Administrator and Spokeswoman of the State Administration of Foreign Exchange. They will talk about the reform and development of the financial sector since the 18th Party Congress. And then they will answer your questions. Now some opening remarks from Deputy Governor Chen. Friends from the press, good afternoon. The past decade since the 18th Party Congress has seen historic achievement in the financial sector under the strong leadership of the CPC Central Committee with Comrade Xi Jinping at its core. The PBOC has followed the guidance of Xi Jinping thought on socialism with Chinese characteristics for a new era, applied the new development philosophy fully, accurately, and comprehensively, and continued to deepen supply-side structural reform in the financial sector. We have steadily expanded financial opening up, promoted both development and security, and greatly advanced high-quality development. In the past decade, we have prudently implemented a monetary policy based on our own conditions. In light of both domestic and international economic and financial situation, we have used monetary policy to adjust the monetary aggregate and structure, deepened market-oriented reform of interest rate and exchange rates. We've made cross-cyclical adjustments in a forward-looking manner, effectively responded to COVID and other domestic and external challenges, and ensured growth, price stability, jobs, and international balance of payment. We've effectively managed money supply, refrained from indiscriminate massive stimulus, and protected the purchasing power of renminbi since 2021, M2 has seen an average annual growth of 10.8%, basically in line with nominal GDP growth, which has created appropriate monetary and financial conditions for steady growth. In the past decade, we've followed the new development philosophy provided financial support to the real economy and achieved high-quality development. We vigorously promoted green finance and green transformation. Green loans and green bonds in China is higher than many other countries. We've formulated green finance standards with other countries and spearheaded green finance across the world. We have upheld innovation, medium and long-term loans for high-tech manufacturing has increased nearly seven times compared with 10 years ago. We have increased financial inclusiveness, boosted economic and social development. By the end of Q1, small and micro loans were over 20 trillion yuan, which supported over 50 million micro and small businesses, or MSBs. We have supported targeted poverty reduction with new financial services. We have also expanded financial opening up. We have basically set up the pre-establishment national treatment and negative list system. Overseas entities held much financial assets, 2.4 times higher than 10 years ago. RMB has been included into IMAP's SDR and it carries the third biggest weight in the currency basket. Its weight will increase from today's 10.92% to 12.28%. In the past decade, we have focused on both development and security and prevented systemic financial risks. We have guarded against major financial risks. 
has made important progress in this regard. We've tackled risks prudently in key sectors, and the financial sector risks are moderate and controllable on the whole. In the past decade, we have continued to strengthen national financial infrastructure for the digital era and broken new ground in modern financial services. With forward-looking and coordinated plans, we have prudently advanced the research and development of RMB digital currency and fully upgraded the cross-border interbank payment system, or SIPS. We built a whole society credit reporting system and the world's biggest financial credit information database. We have also strengthened financial security defense lines against money laundering and fraud and fully enhanced financial consumer protection. Going forward, the PBOC will continue to follow the guidance of Xi Jinping thought on socialism with Chinese characteristics for new era, and firmly take the path of financial development with Chinese characteristics. On such basis, we will make even greater contribution to making China a great modern socialist country and fulfilling the second centenary goal. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chen. Now I give the floor to Mr. Xia. Friends from the press, ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. Since the 18th Party Congress, under the strong leadership of the CPC Central Committee with Comrade Xi Jinping at its core, we have made remarkable achievements in the financial sector and made historic progress in the banking and the insurance industries. The financial sector and the real economy are growing in a virtuous cycle. In the past decade, we have seen an average and an increase of 13.1% for bank loans and 14.7% for investment bonds, which are basically in line with nominal GDP growth. Interbank wealth management and financial trust corridor business has fallen significantly. Financial funds are no longer di being diverted out of the real economy. In the past decade, insurance debts has increased from 2.98% to 3.93%, and insurance density from 1,114 yuan to 3,179 yuan per person. The serious disease insurance system since its inception in 2012 has covered 1.22 billion urban and rural residents. Long-term nursing, nursing insurance covers nearly 150 million people. And we have also expanded the insurance for uh, the agricultural sector. Inclusive MSB loans and agriculture loans have seen an annual increase, increase of 25.5% and 14.9% respectively, much higher than the average growth of loans. On average, each individual holds 9.5 bank accounts. Inclusive finance has seen major development. We have scored great achievement in preventing and tackling major financial risks. Our financial regulation authorities have firmly implemented the decisions on fighting uh, financial risks. High risk shadow banking has shrunk by about 25 trillion yuan from its peak. Non performing loan settlement has made big, big progress, with 16 trillion yuan of NPL resolved in the past decade. A large number of serious risks, risks have been addressed. Illegal financial conduct and corruption have been seriously punished. Reform and opening up of banking and insurance has broken new ground. We have continued to improve the governance of financial institutions and actively explored modern financial corporate system with Chinese characteristics. With the pilot of third pillar, pilot pensions has made major progress, and the pilot of exclusive commercial pension has been expanded nationwide. The pilot of pension wealth management has been extended to 10 cities and 10 agencies. Pension saving pilots will soon start. Intensive preparations being made for commercial pension business. In the past decade, we have also introduced over 50 measures for the opening up of banking and insurance industries. In 2021, the capital of foreign banks in China has risen nearly twofold year on year. A large number of professional foreign financial institutions such as wealth management companies, insurance companies, 
have taken active part in the development of China's capital market. Our financial regulation has become more and more serious. We have formulated and revised 70 pieces of laws and regulations, making major progress in the legal development and greatly improving our regulatory capacity. We have made public, we made public in five batches, batches 124 shareholders who have seriously breached laws and regulations. We have strengthened discipline and accountability and punished financial corruption together with preventing and controlling financial risks. Going forward, CBIRC will continue to follow the guidance of Xi Jinping thought on socialism with Chinese characteristics for a new era and uphold and strengthen the party's all-round leadership over the financial sector, will safeguard the two establishes, enhance the full consciousness, strengthen the full confidence and ensure the two upholds, will continue to fulfill the political commitment and serve the people with concrete financial measures and will we ensure that excellent results are achieved by the end, by the time the 20th Party Congress is convened. Thank you. Now to give the floor to Mr. Li of CSRC. Since the 18th CPC National Congress, we've earnestly implemented the instructions of General Secretary Xi Jinping on the capital market, focused on serving the country's major development strategies, deepen the reform and opening of the capital market, and strengthen basic systems. The capital market is undergoing profound changes. The investment and financing functions have been significantly strengthened, and the market environment has gradually taken shape. Over the past 10 years, the size of the stock and bond market has grown by over 200 200 percent and 400 percent respectively, ranking second in the world with over 200 million investors, making an important contribution to the economic and so social development of the country. In the past decade, the breadth and depth of the services to the real economy has expanded. We've improved the multi-level market system, launched the new third board and the star market, established the Beijing Stock Exchange. The cumulative equity and debt financing has reached 55 trillion yuan, and the high level of circulation among technology, capital, and the real economy has been facilitated. The star market has taken initial shape as a cluster for hard technology industries, and the variety of futures and options basically covers major areas of the national economy. In the past decade, breakthroughs have been made in deepening reform across the board. We've deepened the structural reform on the supply side of the financial sector and promote the comprehensive deepening of capital market reform. The leap from the approved system to the registration system was achieved and piloted on the stock market and the growth enterprise market. The efficiency and predictability of insurance and registration were improved. Key systems for insurance and listing, trading and delisting were improved. In the past decade, the high-quality development of market entities has reached a new level. Listed companies have undergone positive changes with the proportion of profits of real listed co companies growing from 23 percent to nearly half of the profits of enterprises in the above-scale industries. The number of listed companies in strategic emerging industries have grew by more than a thousand in the past five years, and security and the futures institutions continue to grow with total assets increasing more than five times in ten years. In the past decade, the international attractiveness and influence of the capital market has in increased. We've integrated openness and security, promoted all-round opening of markets, products, and institutions, and opened a new chapter in high-level institutional two-way opening. The restriction of foreign share industry institutions has been removed, and the Shanghai Shenzhen Hong Kong Connect and the Shanghai London Connect have been launched. Asia index futures have been launched in Hong Kong and foreign investment has maintained net flow inflow for many years. In the past decade, the capital market legal system was built. In particular, with the efforts of all parties, the new securities law and the amendment to the criminal law were implemented. The, zero, the deterrence effect of zero tolerance has been enhanced, and the situation where the cost of market violations is too low has been fundamentally changed, and the market order has improved significantly. In the past decade, the market has become more resilient and risk-resistant. 
We have maintained a stabilized market expectation and the risks have been reduced and basically controllable. In recent years, the market has withstood the various international and domestic shocks beyond expectations, with the main market indices rising steadily and the trend of healthy development continuing to consolidate. We'll continue to build a regulated, transparent, open, dynamic, and resilient capital market with strong institutions, no interference, and zero tolerance. Thank you. Next, Madam Wang from SAFE. Good afternoon. Since the 18th CPC National Congress, with the strong leadership of the CPC Central Committee with Comrade Xi Jinping at its core, our economy has achieved high quality development and a higher level of opening up. SAFE has been earnestly implementing the decisions plans of the CPC Central Committee and the State Council and achieved major progress in reform and development of foreign exchange. First, the balance of payments has been basically balanced. Domestic external economic development has been more coordinated with the ratio of current account surplus to GDP remaining within a reasonable range. Cross-border trade investment had become more effective and the scale of cross-border payments grew at a faster pace. The RMB exchange rate become more flexible, playing an important role in balancing the balance of payments. Second, the opening up the, of the capital account has steadily progressed, and a high level of convertibility has been achieved. Direct investment is basically convertible, and cross-border financing is carried out independently by market entities under macro prudential management. Securities investment has been opened up in both directions in multiple channels and at multiple levels. Chinese residents have more channels for cross-border asset allocation. The, f the attractiveness of RMB assets has been significantly enhanced. Foreign investors have invested over two trillion dollars in China securities and the weighting of the RMB in the SDR basket has been further increased. Third, cross-border trade and investment and financing have become more convenient and the reform of government functions has been deepened with remarkable progress. Genuine eligible current account transactions have been fully guaranteed, procedures for cross-border investment and financing and other capital items have been streamlined, technology has enabled digital foreign exchange management to progress significantly, and the diversified foreign exchange needs of enterprises, individuals have been better fulfilled. Fourth, the foreign exchange market has become more unified, open, orderly, and effective creating good conditions for the efficient allocation of foreign exchange resources and management of exchange rate risks. The foreign exchange market can conduct trade in more than 40 currencies and cover the mainstream international foreign exchange products. Since the 18th CPC national progress, the trading volume has increased three times, reaching $36.9 trillion in 2021. Fifth, foreign exchange reserves have ensured safety, liquidity, and profitability. In recent years, the reserves have remained above $3 trillion. At the end of May this year, the number exceeded $3.1 trillion. For 17 consecutive years, China tops the world, acting as an important stabilizer and ballast for maintaining China's economic and financial security. Looking ahead, SAFE will continue to follow Xi Jinping's thought on socialism with Chinese characteristics, better coordinate the relationship between development and security, improve the foreign exchange management system in line with modernized governance capacity and system to make greater contribution to transforming China into a stronger, more modernized socialist country. The four speakers briefed us about the overall progress China achieved in the financial sector. You can also refer to the details of the charts and graphs that distributed today, and we'll enter the Q&A session. Please identify yourself before raising questions. The floor is open. Uh, good afternoon, I'm from Reuters. I have a question on 
monetary policy transmission. So what progress has the People's Bank of China made in recent years in improving its policy transmission mechanism? Recently, the central bank has rolled out a series of structural policy tools to cope with economic shocks from COVID and to support green development as well as tech innovation. But some are worried that the overuse of structural tools could weaken the role of aggregate tools, while relying on quantity-based tools would affect the transition to a price-based monetary policy framework. What is your view on this? Thank you. Okay. 在完善货币政策传导机制方面取得了哪些进展以向价格型的转变，请问人行对此有何评论？谢谢。呃，谢谢路透社记者。Thank you for your question. 呃，比较专业性的问题。This is a very professional question. 但这个问题呢，也的确是近一个世纪以来，呃，很多呃专家。And this question has attracted the attention from a lot of experts. In recent years, the PBOC has followed the decision of the CPC Central Committee and State Council kept to a prudent monetary policy and adopted new monetary policy tools. We have give, given play to the role of uh, uh, price leverage. The purpose is to ensure a virtuous cycle of the financial sector and the real economy. Practice proves that in the recent period, the transmission mechanism of our monetary policy has become much more efficient. There are three points I want to make here. Number one, the regulatory mechanism for money supply has further improved. As I mentioned in my opening in my opening remarks, we have ensured sound money supply. Meanwhile, we have kept liquidity at a reasonable, adequate level. In fact, M2 and social financing have been growing basically in step with nominal GDP growth. In this way, the financial sector has supported relatively high growth, relatively low inflation, and sound employment. Number two, in the past decade, indeed, we have gradually built a monetary policy toolbox that fit, fits China's national conditions. Our focus has been on supporting inclusive finance, green development, and innovation, which are the key sectors and weak links of our economy. Such monetary policy tools have Help her, helped us respond to the pandemic. And we have also, with these tools, implemented the new development philosophy and promoted high quality economic development. Thirdly, we have gradually improved the market oriented formation regulatory and transmission mechanism of interest rate. We have focused on the reform of LPR. We have thus formed a new transmission mechanism whereby 
LPR is affected with market interest rates and central bank, and then lend interest rate is affected. In terms of deposit, we have also established a market-oriented adjustment mechanism for deposit interest rate, which means such interest rates will follow the changes of LPR and treasury bonds. In this way, we have further advanced market-oriented reform of deposit interest rate. Here, I want to stress that structural monetary policy tools serve both aggregate and structural purposes. Which means that we can both serve the targeted policy purposes and make contribution to aggregate regulation. In terms of the structural functions, the PBOC has followed the trend of the times and bear in mind the purpose of our tools. We have linked the funds from the central bank with the credit of financial, institu financial institutions in specific areas and industries. In this way, we have incentivized the financial institutions and improved the structure of credit. Meanwhile, structural monetary policy tools are also a way of issuing basic currencies. They can help keep the liquidity at a reasonably adequate level in the banking sector and support the steady growth of credit. Under the aggregate framework, PBOC has applied structural monetary policy tools, and we have made relevant adjustments in light of the development of economic development. We have kept the quantity and scale of the structural monetary tools at a reasonable level, which has also coordinated well with aggregate tools. Meanwhile, our structural monetary tools, as we apply it, its interest rate is not that different from market interest rate. So, such tools will not have a big impact on market interest rate. Thank you. Next question, please. Thank you, Economic Daily. Since the 18th Party Congress, capital market has accelerated reform. The market has become more effective and its ability has improved to serve the real economy. What positive structural changes have been seen in the capital market? Thank you. Thank you. Structural problems are the key factors restricting the high quality development of the capital market. In, in recent years, we've been cracking the problems with reform. The structural changes could be unfolded in the following aspects. First, is the multi-level market system has increased. This system has been improved over the years, with each market and sector featuring prominent development. For example, the Shanghai and Shenzhen main boards highlight the positioning of main boards for blue chips. At the stock market, the characteristics of hard science and the GEM provides better services to innovation companies. At the new third board at the Beijing Stock Exchange focus on serving innovative SMEs at the basic level, and the strategic and fundamental role of venture capital and private equity funds has also become more apparent. Second, the quality of listed companies has improved. 
从行业结构看呢 ，sector wise， 结构已经发生了根本性变化。The structure of listed companies has undergone fundamental changes. With nearly two thousand and two hundred companies listed in strategic emerging industries, and the number of companies listed in strategic emerging industries valued over a hundred billion has increased from nine to forty-six. And they have become more most important driver for economic transformation. And profit-wise. The asset scale of listed companies has increased by about two times compared with 2012, and the cumulative cash dividends in the past three years have amounted to 4.4 trillion yuan, an increase of nearly 50 percent compared with the previous three years. In terms of governance effectiveness, they have become more standardized. And solid progress has been seen in addressing problems such as capital appropriation by major shareholders and legal guarantees. Third, market competition is further enhanced, and the Asia market has become more differentiated, with capital favoring leading and high-performing stocks. The listing mechanism has been established to provide more. First and smooth exit channels. The number of compulsory delisting from 2019 to 2021 is more than three times the sum of the previous ten years. And fourth, the structure of investors has been optimized. Institutional investors continue to grow, and the market value of shares held by domestic professional institutional investors and foreign investors was 22.8 percent by the end of May, an increase of 6.9 percentage points compared to 2016. 2021 saw the proportion of transactions by individual investors fall below 70 percent for the first time. And the concept of value investment, long-term investment, and rational investment was established. Fifth, the product supply system has become more diversified. We optimized the structure of equity, debt, and futures products, in which industrial risk management tools meet people's wealth management needs and better serve national strategies. We launched innovation bonds, green bonds, and other products. And advanced pilot public rates in the infrastructure sector. The entry procedure of mutual funds was streamlined, and the scale of equity funds reached record highs. The participation of mutual funds in pension financial services continued to expand. Six, the trend of abiding by the law and punishing illegal behaviors while promoting good practices continued to be strengthened. With the improved insur insurance system and zero tolerance to crack down on crime, the market atmosphere of operating in good faith is taking shape. The criminal penalties for insurance, for, for insurance fraud and fraudulent disclosure of information have been increased. The first lawsuit against Conway Pharmaceuticals was filed, and 52,000 investors were awarded about 2.5. Awarded about 250 million yuan in compensation. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, please continue. Next question, please. This side, the third seat. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. 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 How is the macro leverage ratio? And in recent years, how has the macro policies performed? Thank you for your question. The change of macro leverage rate is an important indicator for ability of macro regulation. In recent years, the PBOC has continued to improve financial macro-regulation system and adopted new ways of macro-regulation while maintaining basic stability of macro-leverage rates. We have strongly supported the real economy and kept economic performance within the reasonable range. Uh, 
Compared with previous years, by the end of 2021, our macro average average weight uh, was 272.5 percent, or 23.9 percentage points higher compared with 2016, which means an average annual increase of 4.8 percentage points in five years. Between 2016 and 2021, China's annual growth was about 6 percent for GDP and about 2 percent for CPI, and every year we created 13 million jobs. This means that with moderate and controllable macro leverage rate growth, we have ensured relatively high growth, relatively low inflation, and sound employment. Our macro regulation has produced good results. Compared with other countries, since the start of COVID, China has supported relatively fast economic recovery with relatively less new debt. Our macro leverage rate has grown much slower than other major economies. Since the start of COVID, various countries have adopted ultra-easy stimulus policies to respond to recession, which has significantly driven up macro leverage, leverage rate. By the end of 2021, according to statistics of BIS, the leverage rate for all reporting countries was 264.4%. Which was 18.3 percentage points higher than the end of 2019. Comparatively speaking, the data for China was 16.5 percentage points, which means that we have avoided massive stimulus or excess currency issues and lived within our means. While stabilizing the leverage rate, we've taken the lead in economic performance with generally controllable inflation. From 2020 to 21, our average GDP growth was 5.1 percent, which was 4.1, 6.6, and 5.7 percent points higher than the U.S., Japan, and Eurozone, respectively, and our inflation is much lower than other major economies. So generally speaking, in recent years, our macro-regulation policy has been robust, appropriate, and effective, and our macro-leverage rate has been generally stable, which has helped keep our economic performance within the reasonable range and contributed to global economic growth. In this way, we have become an important engine and stabilizer for world economic growth. Thank you. Next question, please. Thank you. First of all, I've noted that Federal Reserve has become an important factor for China's foreign exchange market. We've noted that the external environment has been quite volatile. Facing such risks and challenges, what is our comment on the foreign exchange market in the past decade? Thank you. In recent years, the external environment has been complex, posing a great challenge to China's foreign exchange market. Since the 18th CPC National Congress, the high-quality economic development of China has consolidated the basis for China's foreign exchange market. And in this process, the China's foreign exchange market has been more resilient, withstood various rounds of external shocks, with an increase of, the, of scale in cross-border transactions and a stabilized reserve of foreign exchange. And in recent years, all in all, the foreign exchange market of China has become more mature specifically in the following five aspects. First, the structure of the balance payments has become more stable. The current account surplus has always been a reasonable and balanced range, and the structure of external assets and liabilities has been optimized. The scale of assets held by the private sector has been increasing. FDI has increased and the growth of foreign debt has mainly come from the overseas investors' long-term holding of China's bonds. The structure of foreign debt has been improved and the risks are controllable. 
Second, the financial market has become more open. Cross-border securities investment channels have been broadened and more convenient. Domestic stocks and bonds have gradually been included in mainstream international indices. The scale of cross-border investment and financing transactions has increased, and the depth and breadth of foreign exchange market have continued to increase. Third, the role of the exchange rate as a stabilizer in adjusting the balance of payments has become more obvious. The two-way fluctuations and increased flexibility of the RMB exchange rate can effectively release the external pressure in a timely manner and help stabilize market expectations. At the same time, the proportion, the proportion of RMB in global foreign exchange reserves and international payment settlements continues to increase which is conducive to reducing the risks of currency mismatches and other risks in China's cross-border transactions. Fourth, participants in the foreign exchange market have, have become more rational. Market entities have gradually adapted to the two-way fluctuations of the exchange rate and generally maintain a rational trading pattern. The companies have fostered awareness and awareness of exchange rate risk neutrality has, in, has increased and their ability to manage risks has been enhanced. Fifth, uh, we have fostered a two-pronged management framework of macroprudential plus micro-regulation. The monitoring, early warning, and response mechanisms for cross-border capital flows have been improved. Macroprudential tools have been enriched, and micro-regulation has maintained consistency, stability, and pro predictability cross-cycle. Looking ahead, the fundamental, the good fundamentals of China's economy remain unchanged, and China's cross-border trade and financing will remain active. The stable operation of China's foreign exchange market will have a solid, more solid foundation. Thank you. Next question, please. China News Agency. To Mr. Xiao, you briefed us the reform of banking and insurance industry. Could you tell us what were the obvious changes taking place in the past 10 years, in particular about the progress of the banking industry in providing inclusive financial services and the insurance in providing risk guarantee. What will be the future moves? Thank you. Thank you for your question. In the past decade, we have adopted multiple measures. At the moment, the banking and the insurance sector has seen some new changes. Number one, our comprehensive strength has continued to strengthen. The total asset of the banking sector is 344.8 trillion yuan, an increase from 133.6 trillion yuan in 2012. We have become the biggest banking market. The total asset for the insurance industry increased from 7.4 trillion yuan in 2012 to last year's 24.9 trillion yuan. We are now the world's second, second biggest insurance market among the top 100, uh, 1,000 banks in the world. Uh, 150 of them are from China. Among the 30, uh, it's systemically important banks in the world. ICBC, ABC, BOC, and CCB are among them. The total capital of banking and insurance industries increased from 9.5 trillion yuan in 2012 to last year 32.4 trillion yuan at the end of last year. Number two, financial structure has continued to improve. The proportion of direct and indirect financing can better fit our economic and social development and financial needs. The rural and Urban financial resources have become more balanced. On very average, there are 8.8 banks and 15.8 insurance agencies in each county. The financial resources have become uh, more financial resources have been channeled to the rural area. Among the top five banks in China, they account for about 38% of our total financial assets, which is very reasonable 
and can help promote the reasonable allocation of financial resources and uphold financial stability. We have also a reasonable share and deployment of large, medium, and small, at ma and and micro financial institutions. Our financial system is consistent with our economic and social development, economic system, and financial consumption needs. Number three. The financial governance system with Chinese features has continued to improve. The party's centralized and unified leadership over financial work has continued to strengthen. Party building has been included into various sections of corporate governance. Shareholding structure has continued to improve. Shareholding regulation has continued to enhance. Board and management operation system has become more reasonable. The internal oversight and external supervision are mutually enforcing for financial institutions. These are the main changes. Just now, you focused on inclusive finance and the risk settlement of the insurance industry. Well, let me answer them. In terms of inclusive finance, now, China's villages have been basically covered by inclusive finance. The accessibility of rural financial services have continued to increase. By the end of last year, agricultural loans stood at over 43 trillion yuan, or 25.6 trillion yuan, higher than the end of 2012. Large financial institutions have established inclusive finance departments. In terms of risk response of the insurance industry, we are aware that the insurance industry can serve as shock absorber and social stabilizer, and they can play a very important role. Our insurance industry has provided insurance support for 3.3 billion COVID vaccination. Environmental pollution liability insurance covers over 20 high environment risk sectors. Technology insurance has supported innovation. We also have agricultural insurance, catastrophe insurance, which has provided important support for post-disaster reconstruction and relief. Generally speaking, China's banking and insurance industries have made important achievements in the past decade. Going forward, we will focus on the following areas. We will continue to strengthen reform of the financial sector, strengthen corporate governance. In particular, we need to strengthen corporate governance of rural credit agencies and insurance distribution system. Thirdly, we will better guard against risks, improve the internal risk prevention ability of banking and insurance industry. We will also establish a risk monetary mechanism with Chinese features. We will also establish a whole process risk monetary mechanism. Thank you for your question. Next question, please. My question is on the banking system. What's the latest assessment of risks associated with the nation's smaller banks? Some rural banks in Henan were found to be part of a suspected financial scam that involved tens of billions of yuan. Um, do you have any comment on this, the specific case, and on the broader risks for the smaller banking sector? And also, to what extent has the property market slowdown impacted banks' assess asset quality? And what measures are you planning to resolve these risks? Thank you. 好，请翻译翻译一下。好的，我的问题是关于银行业的，请问您如何评价中小银行所面临的风险
我们也注意到，最近河南的一些中小银行爆出了一些问题，您对此作何评价？另外，银行下行还有近两年房地产调整的过程之中，如何化解此类金融机构的不良资产以及相关风险？谢谢，我是彭博新闻社的记者。谢谢你这个提问啊，这也是我们啊这个过去啊。Thank you for the question. This is a question that we have pretty much focused on in recent years. We attach great importance to medium and small banks, particularly the small ones. In China, we have 3,991 medium and small banks, including 174 commercial city banks, 2,207 rural credit agencies, including rural commercial banks and other types of rural cooperative banks. We also have 1,637 village banks with a total asset of 92 trillion yuan, and they account for 29% of the banking sector, and they mainly support uh, agricultural sector and MSBs, and the funds for them are 40% and 47% respectively. You talk about NPL in your question. In the past five years, we dealt with 5.3 trillion yuan of NPL in small banks. Generally speaking, medium and small banks in China are operating smoothly. Despite some problems and risks in some uh, agencies, which sometimes involve uh, illegal activities, but generally speaking, the risks are under control, and the financial regulators will continue to do a good job in regulating this sector. And we have adopted the following measures. Number one, we have advanced, advanced both reform and risk settlement. We have focused on corporate governance and institutional building. We have also worked to improve the ability of the medium and small banks to prevent and guard against risks. For some key institutions, we have adopted tailored measures to prudently handle relevant risks. Number two, we have strengthened NPL settlement. We have identified different categories of NPLs for these banks and step up provision delivery and NPL settlement. We have also improved the ways of risk, risk settlement and provided some policy support for risk settlement. Number three, we have increased capital through multiple channels. We have coordinated both internal and external capital increase, both domestic and international capital increase. In recent years, and with the decision of the CPC Central Committee and State Council, we have also adopted the measure of encouraging local governments to issue special bonds to increase the capital for the medium and small banks. And these measures are very effective and helped increase the capital for medium and small banks. Number four, improve corporate governance. We have explored how to better coordinate party leadership and corporate governance in medium and small banks. And attempted, and we have worked to establish a simple and effective corporate governance system. Some small banks do not have big capital, and in light of their features and the complexity of their business, uh, their risk prevention needs, we have worked to help establish a simple and practical corporate mechanism, corporate governance mechanism. We also we have also helped cultivate professional uh, professionals for these banks. We have also restrained 
the big shareholders conduct and punished illegal activities of the shareholders. Number five, strength and innovation. We have promoted the digital transformation of medium and small banks. I use the fintech to help these banks tap their potential in the rural field. Number, five, number six, improve the layout of the banks. We have made efforts to establish a system whereby, whereby banks can compete with each other and also conduct effective cooperation. In this way, we have leveraged these banks to better support economic development. In terms of, of the problems related to the village banks in Henan, recently the local police uh, authorities and financial regulation authorities have reported to the media about relevant developments. At the moment, the public security authorities are investigating the case and arrested some people and perpetrators. And our agency will continue to work with relevant other agencies to implement our responsibilities and protect the legitimate rights and interests of the residents. Thank you. Next question, please. Uh, since the 18th Party Congress, the capital market has adopted a lot of measures to promote innovation-driven development. For example, high tech boards since its inception three years ago has supported the listing of over 400 companies. Could you please comment on that? Thank you. The capital market has a special advantage in supporting innovation. Not only the stock market is supporting innovation. In fact, the capital market as a whole has been playing a better role in supporting innovation. For example, the GEM and the star market are running the pilot registration system, and also the establishment of Beijing Stock Exchange have been an important step in supporting SMEs. The venture capital and the private equity on their reasonable exit mechanism, we have tried new steps. And also we've launched innovative venture bonds and technology innovation bonds. We have set up diversified inclusive insurance and listing conditions and allows and allow the listing of unprofitable and companies with special shareholding structures, more flexible institutional arrangements for equity incentives were implemented. Now, the financing ability has been enhanced. The number of IPO companies on the star market and GEM exceeded 70% of the total number of IPO in domestic market in the same period in the past two years. And the private equity funds invested over 10 trillion yuan in the equity of unlisted companies, mostly in innovation sector. Not only on financing the capital market has also supported innovation on an institutional basis. The effect of incentive mechanism has emerged because the capital market has provided, could provide unique, diverse and effective incentive for innovation enterprises stimulating the vitality of their indigenous innovation. A number of technologically advanced and market-recognized innovation companies have entered the capital market, mostly in integrated circuits and biomedicine. 
这个上市的这些科技创新企业的这个情况看呢，技术攻关和自主创新的这个速度在加快推进。The companies have exhilarated their R&D and indigenous innovation. The R&D intensity of companies listed on the stock market and GEM last year was 9.6% and 4.6% respectively, much higher than other boards. All these steps have helped foster an enabling environment of innovation. Thank you. Next question, please. We know that General Secretary Xi Jinping has stated on multiple occasions that China's door of opening of open up will not close, but will only open wider. So in the past decade, what has been done in opening up in the foreign exchange market? What has been achieved in promoting cross-border trade and financing? Since the 18th CPC National Congress, SAFE has been following the underlying principle of ensuring stability while pursuing progress and improved the facilitation of cross-border trade and financing. And your question could be answered in the following three aspects. First, SAFE steadily promoted the high level opening up of the capital account. We coordinated the transaction and the exchange, promoted the opening up of non convertible items in an orderly manner, and improved the facilitation of convertible items. On the basis of achieving the convertibility of direct investment, we promoted the interconnection of cross-border securities transactions with a focus on financial market. We improved the QFE, QD, and RQV, RQD system, launched the Shanghai, Shenzhen, Hong Kong Connect and the mutual recognition of funds between the mainland and Hong Kong market to promote the opening of the bond market. The Chinese government bonds have been included in three major international indices, and a macroprudential management framework for cross-border financing was established to enrich financing channels and reduce financing costs. We served regional openness and innovation, promoted the development of Shanghai as an international financial hub on RMB financial assets, supported Hainan Free Trade Port, the Greater Bay Area, and supported the pilot programs of foreign exchange management innovation in the pilot free trade zones. We carried out pilot projects on cross-border trade and investment and explored more open and safer foreign exchange management system. Second, we advanced the reform of cross-border trade and investment. For example, we stay committed to the principle of convertibility of current accounts and deepen the reform of foreign exchange management in trade. The average processing time has been shortened by more than 75%. Eligible companies can conclude trade foreign exchange application and settlement within a few minutes. We also facilitated the healthy development of new trade models, such as cross-border e-commerce and supported financial institutions to provide safe, efficient, and low-cost cross-border settlement. In 2021, a total of 1.9 billion settlements were concluded. We also launched a number of initiatives to facilitate income payments for capital items and cross-border financing to improve the facilitation level of the use of foreign exchange funds. Third, we deepened the innovative development of the foreign exchange market. There are more market participants. Right now, there are 
773 institutions in China's foreign exchange market. 136 of them are from abroad. At the same time, more, there are more trading products, leading to a more mature international foreign exchange product system. As I said, over 40 currencies are tradable in China's foreign exchange market. And also, we helped enterprises to better manage exchange rate risks. In the first five months, the foreign exchange hedging rate of enterprises doubled that of 2012. In the next phase, we'll remain committed to the reform and opening up of the foreign exchange market and to better serve the dual circulation development paradigm. Thank you. Next question. Preventing and, and resolving financial risks is the internal theme of financial development. Since the 18th CPC National Congress, what has been done by the CBIRC? How is the risk level in the financial sector? What will be the future moves? Thank you. Thank you for your question. We are aware that preventing and addressing financial risks is very important. We have adopted multiple measures to tackle financial risks in key sectors. In the past 10 decades, we have handled large number of serious risks. Number one, the contagion and spillover of serious risks have greatly decreased. We've tackled risks related to illegal financial groups. We've also settled risks related to medium and small banks. In the past decade, we've restored and settled over 600 high-risk financial institutions. Through these measures, the management and operation of small and medium financial institutions are solid and stable. In the past decade, we have also handled the debt risks. And we have focused on ensure that the diversion of financial funds from the real economy has been curbed. We have focused on tackling excess leverage and speculation. In the past years, the asset of banking and insurance industries increased by 8.1 and 11.4 percent respectively. Uh, we have ensured that the funds can be properly used for the real economy. The financing cost has decreased. Number three, the financial order has been ensured. We have seriously punished illegal activities, issued regulations on setting illegal crowdfunding, we have also handled P2P online lending institutions. We have also kept an eye on shareholder and affiliate transaction management. Number four, we have gradually established long-term mechanisms for preventing financial risks. We have strengthened party leadership in the financial sector and work for the establishment of long-term mechanisms for handling financial risks. We have strengthened corporate governance of banking and insurance agencies and built strong defense line against financial risks. Number five, we have, we have advanced efforts to fight both financial corruption and settled risks. We have held to account 
Those corrupt elements evolved inclusion, interest transfer, and illegal infringement in corruption cases. Number six, we have increased transparency and rule of law of financial regulation. We have continued to improve relevant, relevant regulatory frameworks and make our regulation more digitally based and smart. We have strengthened training for regulators and make sure that our regulators are loyal, corruption-free, and responsible. Going forward, CBIRC will continue to work for overall stability, enhance coordination, and adopt tailored and targeted measures, strike a balance between steady growth and risk prevention, and make sure that no systemic risks will occur. Thank you. Next question, please. Thank you. With CNBC, I have two questions. The first question is, what are the priorities for further financial opening up? Number two, in the recently revised supervision methods for managers of publicly offered securities investment funds, According to it, party organizations need to be established at fund management companies, and this method will start operation from June the 20th. In light of the international political environment, external companies will be a bit concerned about data security as well as relevant progress. Meanwhile, Premier Li Keqiang also said that China will continue to open up the financial sector in this context, how to implement the method in the foreign uh, fund management companies. Thank you. Thank you for your question. I'll answer the first part of a question, while Mr. Li Chao will answer the second part. In terms of the priorities for financial reform to open up, well, it is very important for further financial development since the Party, 18th Party Congress, China has made remarkable achievements in financial reform and opening up, which has provided support for economic growth and modernization. Going forward, China's financial sector will continue to advance financial development with Chinese features. We will work for long-term financial security and stability and unswervely promote reform and open up. In terms of deepening financial reform, we have the following priorities. Number one, we will continue to uphold the centralized and unified leadership of the CPC Central Committee, improve financial management system, strengthen regulation and law enforcement, and enhance responsibility for regulation and risk assessment. We will hold to account those who haven't fulfilled their duties. We will accelerate efforts to introduce local financial regulation methods and make clear the responsibilities and mandates of local financial management, which is expected to coordinate well with central financial regulation. Number two, we will advance digital governance of the financial sector. We will strengthen fintech and carry out dynamic monitoring over financial operation and risk situation. Number three, we will keep a close eye on the market access of financial institutions, strengthen penetration regulation over shareholders, and enhance efforts to identify and fight against illegal financial activities. Number four, we will make the financial system more adaptive to the real economy. We will improve direct and indirect financing, promote reform on the restructuring of medium and small financial institutions. We will prevent irregular management that exceeds mandated vision of business. Number five, we will strengthen 
Financial rule of law, strengthen development systems, and cover all financial activities. Within the rule of law, we will also accelerate the adoption of financial stability law. In terms of expanding high-level opening up of the financial sector, on the basis of ensuring security and controllability, we will, with the eye on international standards, Introduce and promote high-level opening up with, on the basis of an active list and achieve systemic and institutional opening up. Number one, we will continue to improve the management system of pre-establishment national treatment plans and active list. We will implement RCEP. We will take account of the financial use of relevant. We will take account of relevant international financial use and prepare, make relevant preparations for CPTPP and DEPA. Number two, we will make it easier for overseas investors to invest in China's financial market. Increase the types of assets and improve relevant systems and use and our business environment. Number three, we establish a regulatory system consistent with high-level financial opening up, make our financial regulation even more professional and effective, build effective firewalls, and make sure that no systemic risks will occur. Thank you. The second question, and under the centralized planning of the party central committee and the state council are opening up, over the years, opening up all around has received steady progress. In April 2018, the cap on foreign shareholder and joint venture fund companies was relaxed to 51 percent, and this restriction in April 2020 was removed. And so far, there are 48 foreign invested fund companies, of which 45 were joint ventures and three were wholly foreign-owned. So foreign-owned fund companies have become an important part of China's fund industry. And recently, the CSRC released the measures to supervise managers of mutual funds and the supporting rules. This document aimed to improve regulation from the whole chain. And the requirement to establish party organization. This is made in accordance with the company law of China. It is compatible with the principle of the Code of Corporate Governance. It is not opposite to those regulations. They are in line. And there is no need to worry about the cybersecurity or data security. The two issues are not relevant. Actually, before we wrote out similar measures, there some mutual funds companies have already set up party organization within their companies. And the practice, it has been proved that such, pra such pra practice only contribute to the growth of those companies and the industry. I will continue to promote opening up of the capital market. Thank you. Next question. Let me answer this question. Every time I take part 
this in a press conference uh, of State Council of the Office, I would answer questions related to MSBs, which shows that the public attach great importance to the financing difficulties of MSBs. In recent years, the PBOC and other financial authorities have worked hard to address the financing difficulties for MSBs. On this front, we have made major progress. As you said in your question, MSBs are important to development, employment and innovation in China. Since the 18th Party Congress, the PBOC, together with other financial regulatory authorities, have earnestly implemented the decisions of the CPC Central Committee. We have given top priority to serving MSBs. We have made careful plans and designs for financial support measures, improved policy framework, and we have focused on the following four areas. Number one, we have adopted new tools. In particular, we have adopted new structural monetary policy instruments, which have produced good results. In particular, in response to COVID, in response to the impact of COVID on MSBs, PBOC has introduced two monetary policy tools with developed impact, which has supported MSBs in making deferred payment of 13.1 trillion yuan. We have also issued inclusive loans of 10.3 trillion yuan. Number two, Reducing financing costs, we have deepened market-oriented reform of interest rates to lower the financing costs for MSBs. Since 2013, PBOC has lifted restrictions on loan and deposit interest rates. We have established an improved LPR formation mechanism and driven down the financing costs for the real economy. In April this year, the lending interest rate for MSBs was 5.13%, which means that in the past five years, it has reduced by nearly one percentage point. Number three, long-term mechanism, which means that with a focus on the major difficulties, we have established the long-term mechanisms to serve the MSBs. For example, we have encouraged financial institutions to set up inclusive finance departments and improve relevant uh, inclusive finance mechanisms. We have encouraged most provinces to establish provincial-level credit reporting platforms and ensure sharing of credit information on MSBs. In this way, the financing coverage on MSBs has significantly increased by the end of April this year. Inclusive finance has covered 51.31 million rural households accounted for one-third of all market entities. Number four, expanding the channels, which means that we have expanded diverse financing channels and increased the accessibility and convenience for financing for MSBs. By April this year, we have issued special financial bonds for MSBs worth 1.70 8 trillion yuan. Uh, Our financing platforms, financing service platforms, have supported 280,000 MSB financing applications worth 12.5 trillion yuan. With the joint efforts, financing difficulties of MSBs have been addressed. Much progress has already been made. By the end of April this year, the loans for MSBs across the country stood at 38.8 trillion yuan, which was 3.35 times higher than the end of 2012. Going forward, the PBOC will continue to firmly support both the public and private sectors. We will adopt early and strong policy support. We will also 
Thank you very much, folks, people, and thank you, journalists, for your participation. This is the end of this press conference. Bye bye.